is great. Your name is Your name is mighty and worthy of praise. Your name is healing. Your name is healing. Your name is peace. Your name is all. Your name is all we need. See your name. Your name is awesome. Your name is great. Your name is Your name is mighty and worthy of praise. Your name. Your name is healing. Your name is all. Your name is all. Your name is all. There is power. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. There is power. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. There is power. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power. So much power, power in the name. Come on, tell them, your name. Your name is awesome. Your name is great. Your name. Your name is mighty and worthy of praise. Your name is healing. Your name is healing. Your name is your peace. Name is your name. Is your name is Come on, let that prayer come and tell them, say your name. Your name is awesome. Your name is great. Your name. Your name is mighty and worthy of Your name is healing. Your name is healing. Your name is all. Come on, lift that up and tell us there is power. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. There is power. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Come on, let's just lift our hands right now. Come on, let's just reverence the Lord right now. Amen. Glory to God. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall what? Continually be in my mouth. And if it's a continual thing, and the songstress is singing, if it's a continual thing, then praises should be in your mouth right now. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. My name is Minister Todrick Thomas, and I'm here to do the welcome this morning. Amen? Glory to God. If we have any visitors in the house, would you please stand at this time? Glory to God. Any visitors? Amen. Glory to God. Come on, let's give our visitors a hand clap of praise right there. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We just want to thank you for coming to our services, for sharing your time with us this morning. Amen. Glory to God. For you came to a, a great and wonderful place where we meet the Lord here. Amen. Glory to God. And this is our pastor, one of our pastors, Pastor Vivian Kemp. Let's give her a hand clap of praise. Amen. Glory to God. And Bishop Otis L. Kemp is our pastor here, which is her husband. Amen. Glory to God. Let's give him a hand clap of praise this morning. 
Amen, amen. And we're going to move to the next part of our service, which is a part of worship anyway, right? Which is our giving. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to ask the ushers to take their place at this time. And we're going to ask the children to line up in the aisle. And while you're doing that, I want to give you all a quick testimony uh, about giving. <laughs> I made a vow that I wouldn't miss any of my tithing and offering giving. Amen? And I use the word giving because we're sowing back to someone and to a kingdom. And so I was just thinking on all the things that the Lord had brought me through. All of the things that the Lord had brought me through. And I was sitting in my home. I remember when, believe it or not, for a year, my children were sleeping on rubber mats. The air mattresses. Amen. We had one table in our living room with a computer on it. We had the gardening chairs out there. We had our bed we had for like seven years. Amen. My kid had the Rubbermaid tub. And so at that time, I was in transitions with my job. Um, I was like, Lord, me and my wife, we were like, Lord, what is this? And what I found out was there is a difference in scripture between when the Lord said you're giving, but you're giving grudgingly versus learning how to receive. Do you not know you could be prideful and put in a position to learn how to receive? Yeah, that's what happened to me and my wife. No, Dr. Joy, we used to pay light bills, give and meet people. I mean, just give. I used to take time off from work just to help other people. And I was like, Lord, what is this? Because I feel like I don't have enough to give to the house of God like I really want to. That's in my heart. And so it took me a year, y'all, to find out what giving and receiving is all about. But what I want you to do this morning is I want you to think about every need that God has met for you in a time where you did not see a way to come through. When that COVID-19 hit us, we still was in that place. And I remember the Lord specifically saying, what you have, everything that you have, give it over to the ministry. And then something took place. And then the same, in the same token, I was like, Lord, I have a need. And I'm not going to go in that, but I remember the Lord was like, call such and such. And let me tell y'all, when I did that, the spirit of pride was broken over me then. Because I was put in a place to learn how to receive. Coming from a place of giving when we had nothing. So I fleece you this morning that if you have a need that you know need to be met. Whether it's health, spiritually, financially. Whatever you have a need this morning. What I'm saying is they say it's a sacrifice. When you say sacrifice, I got that because that's common to say. But what I'm saying is, if you have a need this morning, I want you all to prove God. I want you all to prove God with your word, with his word, and give. Don't worry about what it is you're giving. Just give it from your heart. Even if it's a dollar, give it from your heart. Whatever it is that you have. And I promise you, he'll meet your need. You know how I know? Because Alvina, our home was fully furnished in one blow. Every room in our home, one blow. Then after that, we needed a car, didn't we? A second one, right? And somebody in this ministry, I ain't going to tell you who, 
I knew that they had a car, but it was sitting there, and they thought it had a lot of problems, which it didn't. So I asked the young lady, I said, look, how much would the car be for so I can pay, pay you for it? Well, let me see. I got to talk to somebody. She came back, y'all. She came back right after I just saw another seed. Well, I'm like, Lord, you know, do I really? Come on now. I got a call from a young lady. She said, I didn't ask you how much for it when I asked her. She said, just come get the car. And then when I went to get the title, you paying 400 and some dollars just to transfer it. The people was about to close. I was catching a bus home, going to work, excuse me. I was catching an Uber right there in the tag, and I saw Phoenicia that attends our church in there. She left. I was the last one. That lady said, look, sir, that take too much time for you to, for me to change your title and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But let me tell y'all what happened with that. That 400 and something dollars dropped down to $200 for me to transfer my tag, all that other stuff. So now I got two vehicles and I made a declaration. I said, Lord, I want a vehicle that I don't have to pay for it, that's paid off. And I got one. So again, we're not begging here at MEC Ministries because we know that our needs are met no matter what come our way. No matter what come our way, this ministry will always have, and the parking lot will get done. Because we don't walk by, we don't walk by sight, but we walk by what? Faith. Amen. So if we're going to walk by faith this morning, just go ahead and fill that envelope out. Go ahead and make your declaration known to God that he is truly your provider, and let him, let him bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. So we got different ways to give here. Amen. Do we have that up on the screen? Our different ways of giving? We're going to release the children, but we want to make sure that everybody is included in this thing. Amen? Glory to God. We got different ways to give. Amen? Glory to God. We have the ability to drop it off in the church right now. We have text to give. Amen? Glory to God. You can also go on the Healing Center app. You can do that as well. You can do Cash App. Amen? Zelle. And you can also do PayPal. Amen. Glory to God. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to be able to fill out your envelopes legibly and be able to get your seed together. Amen. Glory to God. We can go ahead and release the children at this time and I'll go ahead and pray over them. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these. We thank you for these apostles, these bishops, these teachers, these evangelists, these prophets and prophetess. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that these are the future, the glory carriers that will carry your word. And nothing shall by any means harm them. Nothing shall by any means come against them. Because the God is in, the, in them is greater. Amen. We thank you for each one of these children. Glory to God. And now we'll throw you over into the hands of the ushers. Amen. Amen. the givers, those that are giving tithes and offering this morning. We thank you that all of their needs have been met even before they ask because you know what they need. Heavenly Father, we know that the canker worm cannot eat up their seed. We thank you that those have given, we thank you for those that have given the 30, the 90, and the 100 fold that we know that you are faithful to return it back to them 100%. In Jesus' mighty name, come on, let everybody say amen. Glory to God. Thank you. 
So, well, you may have your seats. You may have your seats today. Praise God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for Vivian, I'm calling him out my name, Vivian. I say, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. I'm just so excited and glad to see you, you, and you today. I just want to let you all know, listen, we're not trying to freeze you out. We're having mechanical difficulties with the AC. So I think you'd rather be freezing than to be hot. But we're working on it. We're working on it. It just takes a while to get the peace that we need. So bear with us, please. We're not trying to, we're not like the hospital with the germs and trying to freeze you out. But that's what's going on today. We'll turn it off, we'll turn it on, but we're, we're, we're getting there. I just like to say to the um, the food ministry, the homeless ministry, would you all stand, please? Everyone that was here yesterday, I have a report for you all. Everyone that took part in the feeding on yesterday. My sister works with a company called Forrester. It's an insurance company. And they gave you a great review on yesterday. They gave you 100 plus review. And I just want to tell MEC Ministries, we're doing something right. They also let us know, this a, they gave us a grant of $1,000 to feed and give the uh, homeless people some, what they get, what you gave them? Care package, thank you. And so there's another great one coming to you all. They're going to see about giving us a grant for $1,500. So to God be the glory. I just want to say that she was amazed at how you all worked together. She saw nobody fussing. She said, Vivian, it was so amazing that they went and they did, and they talked to the people real nice. 
So there are some other activities that the ministry that you all are doing. I know I talked with Minister Tracy that other things that you're doing, but I'm going to tell you, you're doing a great job. Don't come down. God bless you. Amen. Well, I think I'm going to give this mic to this young man. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not looking at him. I'm going to pull this coattail if he start looking, you know. You know. Yeah, I got to pull it. I love this guy. I really love this guy. And I'm going to take care of this guy. I know he always want to tell me, I got it, I got it. Get somewhere and sit down. But I love him. God bless you. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can the church say amen? You know, in, in my tenure of being pastor, it's something that I taught myself. Whatever you've done in your past, you're going to live it in your future. I am a church goer, feeling good or bad, I go to church. And you'll never know when I'm feeling bad, because I won't tell you. Amen. I know, no, no I'm not a humanoid, I'm a man. And all of us, every last one of us, have days up and days when we are down. But see, I believe that God's word is true. And it said you have what you say. So you got to remember, anytime something goes wrong with the body, it's conducive of Adam's failure in the garden. So if you confess it, then you fail right along with it. Let me turn it over here and say it over here. And then, and praise the Lord. There was no failure in Jesus. None whatsoever. We mark the perfect man. And behold the one that walketh upright. And when you constitute an idea, especially biblical ideas in your spirit, nothing can keep you away from the presence of God. Because your relationship is more than 10 minutes and go to sleep. Amen. I talk to him every day just like I'm talking to you. I don't have to see him to talk to him. I know that he's present. Any and everywhere I go, he's omnipresent. You see, if we, if we, look, at, if we look at the world today, we got to realize within our spirits that the Antichrist is running rapid. Now you, you don't see him, but you see the results of what he does. Is that right? You see, you see listen, uh, this country was predicated off of family. And the enemy knows if he can destroy the family, he can destroy the country. When did God ever make a woman and a woman husband and wife? Turn to your neighbor and say, we're destroying our country. <laughs> and you might as well hey, face up to it. Face up to it. Amen. 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 And, and when, you, when, you get, when, you, when you get within yourself this, this lustful spirit, woman, that you got to have a woman, you need to come see me. <laughs> Ain't no shame in my game. Ain't no strain on the crane because the cable is able. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you know, I, I'm not against people like that, but I'm against what they do. They're allowing Satan to destroy this country. That's what they're doing. The Antichrist is present. The Bible says he's here even as of now. I, I, don't, I don't understand why a young girl 13 years old want to dress like a boy. I don't understand that. I'm sorry, I don't understand that. And I want all you young people to look at me because I ain't scared up here. God made you a woman dressed like a woman. And if you have any doubts about what you are, take off your clothes and look down. And you'll know exactly what you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How, how, how do you think I feel when you're taking what belonged to me?
Amen. Amen. And we, we talk about dignity, but we don't, listen, we don't even have commitment talking about dignity. Dignity is, the, is the, let's put it this way, it's on the back burner for some people. Loyalty, they'll never have. Because your dignity is not who you present yourself as. Amen. So, I want to show you something here. Dr. Joy, you know this has been in the Bible as long as I've been alive. I never saw it. Can I talk to the doctor a minute? And I, I mean, I've, I've read my Bible, I don't know how many times. But I never, up until this week passed, saw what I seen. Eve. Eve had a problem. Her problem was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I didn't see that in Genesis until I read it over again. And then 1 John backed it up again, and he told us about it in 1 John, what gets us in trouble. If you got a wife, you don't need to be looking at another man's wife. That's called lust of the eyes. The pride of life is I can have her if I want her. I know who I am. That's the pride of life. Amen. The lust of the flesh is I want to feel good. And don't matter how many times I'll get to get, I'm going to feel good. And that's totally against God. Can we go there? Okay, let's go there. We're going to turn a few pages here. Go, go to Genesis 1. Genesis 1 and 24. Genesis 1 and 24. We'll start there. Booth, go ahead and write this down. In Genesis 3. In Genesis 3 and start at verse number 1. I'm not going to keep you long. We're going to run right through this. 1 John. 2 and 15. 1 John 2 and 15. Okay, we'll start at Genesis 1. Uh, 24. Let us read that together. Ready to read. And God said, Let us bring forth earth of a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things, the beasts of the earth after his Next verse. Next verse. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, mm -hmm. and cattle after their kind, uh -huh. and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. After his kind. And God saw it was good. Saw it was what? Good. So that means he had no need to change it. Right. Next verse. And God and said, God said let, let us make man our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish Dominion over what? The fish of the sea. What else? Dominion over, well, go ahead. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, you see that word dominion? You know what that means? Power, control. Everything is subject to man. So, so, why would you, why would God place dominion there? Because dominion is a sense of pride, who I am. But you can override who you are by using that authority over people that you don't like. It's called the pride of life. You don't tell me what to do. I'm a supervisor. Sit down. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to chapter number three. Look, girl, you got me? Gotcha. Chapter three, verse one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Yea, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Go ahead. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And See, wait a minute, hold it now. 
it, it appears that God knew, it appears that he knew that they was going to do it. It appears that way. It's a prelude of what's to come. So he knew it, but yet he suffered to create us. All of us are clones. And if God hadn't into us, we would never come alive. You know what a mannequin is? That's what we were when he created us, Adam, until he blew the breath of life into his nostrils. Nothing but a mannequin. But he knew that man would fail. But God so loved. You see, remember this. Angels don't look like God. They don't resemble him in no way whatsoever. We do. We are splitting images of him. That's why when Satan came down, and remember now, Satan was kicked out of heaven before Adam was ever created. He couldn't enter the garden, so he had to use what was in the garden in order to tempt the man and the woman. So the serpent allowed him to use his body. Now remember, now all, all of you, I hope, had science when you was in seventh grade. And you know anything with a vertebrate has feet and legs. Do y'all know that? Uh, I hope y'all, I hope they taught you that. Anything with a vertebrae, that's a backbone. You got legs and feet, okay? If you don't have feet, you got legs because the vertebrae connects to the legs. So the serpent had legs. I'm going to get an amen over there. Do I need to turn over here? Amen. Oh, okay. All right, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He had legs. And what most people can't believe that he talked. Now, if God can create a man and put a voice in him, you going to tell me he can't create an animal and put a voice in him? Oh, yes, he can. Yes, he can. So the serpent allows Satan to use his body. So he could talk with the woman. And all he did is what people do today. It hasn't changed. Get you to see yourself and make you feel like you're more than what you are. Oh boy. Eve knew as well as Adam. Now we're going to read in the third, in the third uh, chapter here. And you're going to see where Eve was there in the garden, and Adam was with her. Come on. Man, how could you stand there and let your wife make mistakes when you know better? Well, I'm just trying to keep peace in my house, Bishop. That ain't peace. That's supporting a lie. Let me get it over here. Can I get an amen here? Yeah. Okay, praise the Lord. When you know something is wrong, why would you compromise truth and stand with that lie? When you are born again, it's God's DNA in you. And for, for whatever reason, you oppose lies and compromising when you're supposed to anyway because Jesus did. Follow me as I follow Christ. So here it is, he allowed the serpent allowed Satan to use his body. Go ahead and read. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. For God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Well, let me ask you a question before you go any further here. If it was no death on earth, how did she know what die was? Yeah. 
You don't know what you haven't done. And you can't be a witness to anything you're not a part of. But look what he did. It's called deception. See, you can, you can, you can, you can have the spirit of witchcraft and don't know it and don't recognize that you do. Okay? So, well, what is the spirit of witchcraft? When you want control. When you want control. That's the spirit of witchcraft. Woman, if your husband can't tell you nothing, you're trying to control him. Let me try that over here. I ain't getting nothing there. Well, I'm telling you, I have to go. Well, well, do, uh, I look like a windshield wiper blade. I got to switch from side to side, side to side, side. Well, praise the Lord. And so, so remember now, that's what Jezebel did. And when Ahab wanted the man, neighbor, was vineyard, yeah, he wanted his vineyard. And then, then he went home and, you know, and, and he put on his face and, and Jezebel come and said, what's wrong? Well, uh, I offered him more than what he had and more than what he got, but yet he still don't want to let me have his vineyard. Jezebel put something together. Say, I get it. You know, when I don't know how many of you was taught this, but I was when I was a young skippy in church, that the spirit of Jezebel was a woman decorating herself, but that's not true. That's not true. They, they taught us that. And boy, we, we was little boys. We used to run around and see the girls all dressed up. Hey, Jezebel, hey. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, thank God for knowledge. Thank God for knowledge. Praise the Lord. A woman want to fix up herself to look better than what she presently looked like, and we call her a Jezebel. We, just, uh, we was just stuck on stupid. Praise the Lord. Amen. We didn't know. I mean, we was taught that we had to believe what the parents said because they were parents and they, they were the only gods we knew. And we figured they was closer to God than we were because we knew nothing about them. So we just followed that, that trend. Praise the Lord. And so she got, to, she got to this man's vineyard. And after she got the man's vineyard, the prophet came and said, listen, the dogs are going to take care of you and Jezebel. And when Jezebel fell from the terrace, the dogs ate up. Ahab got religious. You know how people done backslid? <laughs> they done backslid when something going to go wrong. They go, oh, Lord Jesus. It's, it's prayer time, right? Uh-huh. Ahab prayed his way out of that. Praise the Lord. So, preacher, where you going with this? I'll tell you where I'm going with this. Stop trying to control where you don't have a position. Let it go. Tell your neighbor you're better than that. You're better than that. Okay, little girl, let's go. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And you should be, there was already gods of this earth. See, why, why tell me something? I, I know I'm a man. You don't have to tell me I'm a man. I know that. So you can't tempt me with something that I already am. But this is what was going on with Eve. This is just what was going on. All right, let's go. And when the woman saw that the tree was... When she what? Saw. Ah. Lust of the eyes. When she saw that the tree was good. Tell me that's the first time she saw it? No, it's not. Because if you go back and read that first and second verse there, you see, when God put them in the midst of the garden, he said, look, you can eat anything here, but don't touch this tree. All right? So it's not the first time she saw it. But sometimes, when you are weak in your spirit, everything looks good that you shouldn't touch. That's why it's important to study the word. See, the word is... I like to call it building blocks. Not only does it build integrity, but it gives you a space with God where you can talk with him one-on-one. -on -one. Remember what he said about Moses. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Remember what he said? Moses, I talked to him face to face. You mean to tell me God has respect to a person he can't talk to us face? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. But the thing is, our desires 
are not as deep as Moses was for the presence of God in his life. See, when you put the world there and match it against God, you're going to go to the world because you can see what it offers, but yet you can't believe what God say. Being a human and touching it is there before me. And then believing that it's coming is hard because I see it here, but I don't see it here. I got to believe it's coming from here. So I can put my hands on it. That means the lust of the flesh is now taken over because gratification is a part of who I am now. I'm gratified because I got my hands on it. And I don't have to look for it to come because it's there. So what are you saying, Bishop? Anything you can put your hands on, you better check it before you put your hands on it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because that's not a walk of faith. That's the spirit of lust. Come on, let's go. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant to the eyes. Wait a minute, I wrote something down here. Listen to this. Lust have a very strong desire for something that doesn't please, but yet always desire to have. You know what that is? Let me show you what it is. You can desire to have something, whatever it is, it's just called it something. And once you get it, you finish with it. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Then guess what? Tomorrow you want it again. And the next day, you want it again. When you are catering to the flesh, you can't satisfy it. Mm. Nothing satisfies the flesh. Even when you are weak, you still want to do wrong. Because there's no satisfaction now. And if you are made known that it's wrong, you try to find a way to do it so no one sees it. Come on. That's called lust. That's called lust. You know, mama said, don't go out with that girl because she fast. Well, mama, you don't know. You, you old time. You, you old, you okay, okay, man, sense. We're modern today, mama. <laughs> Tell you what, when you go to jail, don't call mama. I wish my boys were here. They'll tell you. I said, go to jail. Go to jail. And you did it. Don't you call me. She said, they call her. Don't call me because I'm not coming. The reason why I'm not coming because I taught you right from wrong. And I'm not, you said, well, that, oh, my, my granddaughter gave me a T-shirt that said, old grumpy forever. <laughs> For a Christmas present, how about that? I won't wear it, Doc, because I know I'm not grumpy. I'm stern. <laughs> I'm stern forever. Praise the Lord. Good. Amen. Amen. I believe, I believe, I believe in moral values. Amen. And listen, it doesn't matter. Am I taking too long? No. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter what fad that the world brings in. That doesn't change. my concept about life. It doesn't change it, not at all. Yes, I'm old fashioned, but I'm 77. Now, when you reach 77, then you can tell me, does being old fashioned work or modernizing yourself work? I'd rather be old fashioned because being old fashioned, you acknowledge how you got here and who brought you here. Amen. All right, let's go, little girl. And it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. There it is. It is that flesh, flesh. Pleasant to the eyes. I got to have it. Have you ever seen the apple on the shelf in Winn-Dixie or Publix? That's, that's of course, if you like apples. 
and you you want to get into that boy right quick. I mean, it's just as red and plump and plush, and you hope that it's sweet. Mm-hmm. And then when you get it and hit it, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not sweet. That, that that lust and that desire seems like it just fade away, doesn't it? So so. Did you really want that apple or was you lusting after that apple? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we listen, we're gonna we don't hold right there. Let's go. Let's go over to 1 John. 1 John 2. 1 John 2 and 15. Let's go there. You got it? First John 2 and mm-hmm. 3. Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. You got it? First John 2 and 15. Didn't I say that? Yes. 2 and 15. Gotcha. All right, here we go. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Look what he says here now. Love not the world. Well, let me show you. Sometimes you might think I'm picky. But being picky satisfies your spirit. When you're not picky, the lust of the flesh takes over. All right? Now, look look what John said. You know who this is? This is Jesus' brother, right? Y'all know that, right? If you don't, you know it now. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. Neither the things that are of the world. Okay. It's, It's Sunday, and you're supposed to be in church, and you had jazz at the gardens. And then you try to justify it by saying, I be in church every Sunday. I can take one Sunday off. It's 52 Sundays in a year. Well, let me ask you a question. What if God take one spout of breath from you when you get up in the morning? You wouldn't want him to do that now, would you? So why would you deprive me? You only come on Sundays. I don't see you on Thursdays. But you want to eat every day. I'm going to say it like my son Otis said. Y'all ain't saying nothing. (laughs) You want to eat every day? Don't. Do you not know you're starving your spirit? This is why when you come to church, it seems boring to you because you have no relationship with praise and worship. None. None. You, you cannot justify wrong with attitude. And some people get mad so you can see them get mad. What is it saying? I don't like what you said. Who cares? Huh? Either you're going to like what I say today or in the day of judgment, you're going to wish that you like what I said. Are you all all right? Uh, uh, how How many Facebook people we have in here? Okay. Did you? All right. All right. I, I, I want to uh, uh, look. I ain't got nothing against Facebook. I ain't got nothing against Facebook. Amen. It's just some of the stuff on there you better not believe. All right. Just some of the stuff. I ain't got nothing against it. The guy. The guy told the girl he wanted the girl so bad. He said he was from France. So the girl. Let's watch this now. So the girl introduced her friend to this friend, and she. He said to her. He said, "Where is he from?" She said, "Well, he's French." He went bouja. <laughs> He even pronounced it wrong. It's, <laughs> so you know he wasn't from France. Praise God. Bouchard. <laughs> but anyway, I was on Facebook. Yeah, I was on Facebook. Yeah. Let me tell you why I was on Facebook. Checking on you. Getting into these confrontations and you don't even know the Bible. 
You know the scriptures, but you don't know the Bible. Leave them folks alone. Praise the Lord. And got a nerve to say, I go to Pastor Kemp. Don't you, don't you put my name up there. Don't you dare. But how many of you witnessed this cloud? They showed a thunder cloud in the Midwest coming toward these people. And it was bigger than the building, the cloud. You seen that? Did you see it look like a congregation of people? And the leeriest thing about it, something was hanging from, from the bottom of it down. And what hit me was the day of the Lord is at hand. I wish you could have seen. That thing was so scary. I turned. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to see it no more. I turned. That makes me think the Lord is talking to me. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right, sir. I'm all right. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, look, I don't know who, sons, you say you saw it, right? I don't know who else. But thank God I got a witness. You should have seen that thing. I mean, it looked like God was going to burst out of those clouds any moment. It was that leery. Never seen nothing like that in my life. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Ghost bared witness and said he's coming. And it's just like when that cloud fell down. That's how he's coming. We don't know when. We don't know where. But we do know how. Amen. He's coming. All right, let's go. Let's go. I'm, and if could, any, could I get about 10, maybe 15 minutes? Okay, come on, let's go. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Say that again. If any man love the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So, so look what John is saying. If you attach yourself to the world, you don't love the Father because you don't know him. You don't know him. If, if the things of the world interest you more than coming to church, you don't, you don't know the Father. Mm -mm. You don't know. But Stan and I was talking today, earlier this morning. Uh, I, I was, I've been so convicted from a little boy up until this present time. If I went to work and got off late, I was like Deacon John over there. I come, I come to church with my work clothes on. Sit in the back, somebody can smell me. Well, why did you come that way? I felt that I was going to miss something if I didn't come. God has something to offer every time you come. But, but your expectancy got to be there. If you're not expecting nothing, you're not going to get anything. I, I expect for God to feed me. I want to know more today. Well, tomorrow, I want to tomorrow, know more tomorrow than I know today. If, if, every day is ever increasing faith, ever increasing. And you cannot increase your faith unless you read. If you don't read, you don't increase your faith. No, 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 nobody can't pray for you to get no faith. Praise the Lord. That's the easy way out. But you still, there's no way you're going to get it. you got to read. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And believe me, I know some people read to themselves, but it's all right to read loud, out loud. It's all right so you can hear it. You're going to speak it and you can hear it. It goes out and comes right back into your spirit. It's a building blocks. It calls you to be a better person than who you are. It was, come on now. Come on, church. And, and the world can't do anything to you. If anything, you can do it to the world. It can't hurt you. You're more than, you're not just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Amen. You're the only ones can cast devil's eye. Praise the Lord. These priests run around there flagging the cross. Cross don't cast the devil eye. And because you got on the back, we're calling that don't cast the devil eye. Praise the Lord. We'll cast him out as power and authority. Amen. In the Holy Ghost. Hello, hello, praise the Lord. Come on, let's go, honey. And for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Look at that. 
The lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes and, and the, the pride, pride of, of life. life. Is not of the Father, it's but is of the world. It's of who? The world. Can I give you a demonstration? Well, let's say I haven't been around you in maybe a couple of years. And I got a promotion on my job. Now, when you, when you knew me two years prior, I was taking the garbage out in the boss's office. And now I'm in the warehouse telling people where to go. And I see you. And we conversate, create a narrative. So well, what are you doing now for yourself? You still taking the garbage out for the boss? Taking the garbage out for the boss? Hmm. I'm past that. Who do you think you're talking to? That's pride. That's pride. Well, how should you have put it? No, I'm no longer in that position. Uh, I moved up. Meek and a humble spirit. Meek and a humble spirit. I said something to a, one of my friend's father. He was, he was a garbage man. So I said, you still carry garbage? He said, no. <laughs> I said, well, what do you care? He said, I'm a sanitation engineer. <laughs> Picking up garbage. <laughs> Amen. Sanitizing the backyard. But who gave him his engineer license? <laughs> Let's go, little girl. And the world passeth away, and mm -hmm. the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God but abides. But he what? That doeth the will of God. Go ahead. Abide forever. But he that doeth the will of God abide forever. You don't have any hangups. And guess what? You don't care about position people hold over you. <laughs> Amen. Remember, remember, the authority is not in the position that you hold. The authority is in what the position does that you stand in. Understand that. Praise the Lord. See, when a man when a man has power, he know how to use of that power without telling people, you go over here and you go over there. He, with that power, say, come on, follow me. Let's, let me show you what to do. See, you, you can't tell people what to do if they don't know what to do. And if you got power, you got authority, and you got position, you show people what to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't be afraid to put your hand in the mud. You want them to put their hands in the mud, but you don't want to put your hand in the mud. That means you're usurping authority in the wrong manner. Praise the Lord. If I want you to do something, I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you can't do it, we're going to do it together until I teach you how to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, clap your hands and shame the devil. This is who we are. This is who we are. We humble ourselves before Almighty God. And when we humble ourselves, he will exalt us in due season. And what God is doing now is taking us through trials and error. It's all right to error, but get up and get back in the race if you ever decide to fall. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is no perfect man and no perfect woman in here. Every now and then you might go through a little schism and ism and fall. But get up and get back into the race again. Praise the Lord. And don't let what I said on you have an effect on you and you say, I don't want to come back to that church. No, you just change your mannerisms. If you know you're wrong, baby, just get it right. All it takes, like Naki say, just do it. That's all you got to do. Just do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and say, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I am back. Look out, devil. I am back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Jesus, help me, Lord. All right, we got a couple of more, couple of more verses to go here, and we're done with you. Hallelujah! Oh God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! What the devil meant for harm, 
God turned it into my good. He thought he had me skating, slipping and sliding, jiving and lying, but I'm back. Devil, I am back. Hallelujah. 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 Just get up and walk around. Get up and walk around. Let him know you're back. Let him know you're back. Give your neighbor a high five. Give him a high five. Let him know. Let him know. I'm back. I'm back. I am back. I am back. You thought you had me down, but I'm back. You thought you had me pent, but I'm back. You thought I wasn't going to get up, but I'm back. You thought I'd never make it again, but I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I am back. I am back. I am back. And I am back for good. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I got to praise. I got it back. I got it back. I got it back. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate you. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Holy. Holy. Huh. Holy God. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, shake it, shake the devil under your feet, shake the devil under your feet, shake it off, it's time to shake it off, you had me down, too long this year, this day, this day, I place you under my feet, I place you under my feet. Hallelujah. Bless your daughter. Bless your daughter. Bless your daughter. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. Come on, put your foot on him. Put your foot on him. Put your foot on him. Put your foot on the devil. Put your foot on him. Jesus took his foot off of his neck and told you to put your foot on his neck. Put your foot on him. Glory to God. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus, I do this. I do it, Lord. I got a question for you. How did you feel when you came here this morning? Huh? Tired. Very tired, exhausted. So I wonder why I was hurting. And I figured it out, I was picking you up. Yes, I felt your infirmities. I know some of you said, well, Bishop, how could that be? Let me tell you how it can be. Because you, once you wear a certain anointing, you can even transfer the authority over to others. Paul did it to Timothy. Praise the Lord. Read your Bible. And watch what Jesus did. And Jesus said, now I give you power. He transferred it. He passed it on. But you can only do that when you're in a certain position of authority. Transformation come. And it's done through God. 
that energy that you were searching for, you don't have to search no longer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I will speak to that mask that's in your brain. You have no authority here. You are standing in the presence of God's children. And he has sons here too. So I'm serving you notice. You better leave this woman and run in terror. You can't stay here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Leave her. what was said this day is so and it is so do I have any children of God going to agree with me <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah glory to God glory to God glory to God
Let's give God a hand in this place. Hallelujah. Let's give our bishop a hand for that word that went forth today. And our prayer is that you all take heed to the word of God. Amen. I'm here to briefly do the announcements. And it's just a friendly reminder that there is corporate prayer scheduled every first Saturday at 8 a.m. of every month. We are so excited to announce the opportunity as MEC Ministries to pour back into the ministry. We are asking everyone to plant a $1,000 seed offering towards our building project. Please select the building fund option on your envelope, whether you're filling out the envelope or whether you're completing it online, and thank you in advance. So please make sure you check off building fund for your donations. The Young Adults Ministry will be having a picnic on Saturday, April the 27th at 11 a.m. at the Pompano Community Park. Please see Sister Brittany Spear and Kiki Spann for any concerns. And the young adults ages consist of 18 through 30. Calling all married couples. All married couples. We will be, we'll be having a date night Saturday, April the 27th. Give it up for the married folks. The 27th at 5.30 p.m., we will be doing an indoor golf and dinner at the Promenade in Coconut Creek. Please see Minister Sierra to sign up. We are excited to fellowship with all the married folk of MEC. Bishop would like to meet with all men for fellowship, fun, and great time in God on Saturday, April the 20th at 12 p.m. Please sign up with Deacon Dewan so that we can have an accurate count for food. That is April the 20th. Attention early risers. MEC Sunday services are designed with you in mind. Our 9 a.m. services begin our day in the presence of the Lord with our up and coming generation of ministers. Then followed by Sunday school at 1020 a.m. which equips us with wisdom and understanding. Our day concludes with our 1145 service which is filled for our souls and preparing us for the week ahead. If you are not in the house of God, the question is where are you? And our last announcement MEC Global presents All-Star Weekend. And this is going to be a fun day. The date is June 29th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. This will be held at Pompano Park. The address is 1660 Northeast 10th Street, Pompano Beach. That's going to be followed by a Sunday gathering at MEC Pompano, June the 30th at 1 p.m. The location will be here at the church. Thank God for our announcements. Govern yourselves according, accordingly and mark your calendars. God, we thank you for this service on today. We thank you for each and every individual that came out to make this service possible, God. And the ones that tuned in online, God, we thank you for your word that has gone forth. And we pray that those who heard your word, God, will take heed to your word and live out your word in these last and evil days, God. We thank you as we get ready to depart and leave this place, God, that your presence presence will continue to dwell among us, God. We bind up any works of the enemy that tr may try to hinder us or come against our family and block our paths on today, God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor. The victory is yours, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, have a blessed week in Christ. Amen.